What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Layton. Last time I got my ass kicked by a, the stupidest puzzle I've ever seen in my entire life that I wasted all my time on. But we're about to wrap up the case. Very impressive. I can see why Madame Dublé is always banging you. Thank you. I do pride myself in my puzzle-solving abilities. I hope you don't mind me inquiring, but what's in the parcel? Do you really need to ask? It's a parcel from a tailor. Do you think perhaps it might be clothing? Ah, oh, wise guy, eh? The box just seems a little small for clothes, that's all. Is it really any concern of yours what's in my parcel? Fine, I'll tell you. I suppose you did bring it here for me after all. It's baby clothes. Despite appearances, that lady is actually a very skilled tailor. I frequently have her make clothes for me. Ah, you quit because of your baby. Well, that explains the small box. How old is your baby? So many questions. Just three months now. Ooh, th 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 three months? <laughs> but growing out of outfits already. A baby. I do love babies. They're so cute. I see. Well, never mind my personal life. What about the Ratbit investigation? Isn't it time you gave up? All this superhero nonsense is starting to get very old. Of course, a baby. Keep up, woman. We've moved on from that. It's just that what you said before has made something fall into place. What are you talking about? Solving puzzles, Mr. Chance. It's what I do best. And the pizza is complete. That's the truth behind this case. You haven't solved it? Of course I have. I'm ready to confine this mystery to history. I now know who Ratman really is and why he suddenly disappeared. It's time to reveal the secrets behind the power mouse of justice. Come on then, tell us. Tell us now. Where's Ratman gone? Why did he disappear? Ahem. <clears throat> The superhero of London Town simply had to stand down. Because he had a baby, maybe called Bratman Jr. Um. What was that? I was trying to be all Ratman-y, but it's hard. <sighs> Isn't that right, Mr. Chance? Or should I say... Ratman! Dang, right in front of everyone? Do you have no... <laughs> Rats. Well, I guess he's gonna be killed now and arrested for vigilanteism. He's Ratman. Balloon head there. Blah, 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 blah. You found that good stories were dwindling and you wanted to create some news, didn't you? So you decided to use your wealth and connections to create a superhero. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, you're quite right, Miss Layton. Oh my god, that voice. Okay. Well, who knew? <laughs> With the arrival of Ratman, sales of your London publications shot up, and the city was rid of crime to boot. A win-win situation. But then, three months ago, you hit a snag, and Ratman had to be pulled off the streets. Puppies, eh? Exactly. Ratman, or rather you, Mr. Chance, had a baby. A baby you just can't bear to put down, he's so cute. As a result, superhero antics have had to take a back seat. Yes, yes, that's about the size of it. You wouldn't understand, but it's like I just want to gaze into my baby's eyes all day long. And when I do, I can't think about fighting crime. Oh my god, this voice is the worst voice for any superhero I've ever heard. My superhero days are over. That man's finished. Everyone just needs to forget about him. Mr. Chance, or rather, Ratman. You're throwing in the towel. 
Neglecting your city's needs? No, no, no. That won't do. No chance. <coughs> Not on my watch. <coughs> but butter. No butter, no jam. <laughs> no cream, no scones, no butts. What? Here's the answer. More rat men, that's what we need. Franchising. Hooray! Fantastic. <laughs> well, at least think about it for a second. Don't just... Okay. Gosh, there's Ratman merchandise for sale all over the place. And it's flying off the shelves as well. Who'd have thought the people of London would come to rely on rats? <laughs> it seems the new leader of the pack, Rat Boy, is the one everyone wants. Oh, him. Make way, make way. Here comes Ratman to save the day. Oh, damn. He's got it. He's got it. And so London saw the return of Ratman, or rather, Ratmans. The Rat Pack, as they became known, brought peace and security to the streets of the city. With Ratman on the ground, you're safe walking around. Well, that was certainly something. Okay. We only have one case left on the board! And then I assume that the next important quest uh, case will arrive. Because these are all sort of, you know, trivial things. Case 8, the Goddess of the Thames. Cat and company have been invited on a luxury cruise, but will the golden goddess in the Grand Lounge keep smiling? The answer is no. Find out next time. But no, the video's not over yet. I say, what a smashing vessel. It's much more luxurious than I'd imagined. And I don't even have my own kettle! So this is the Temtanic. Jesus. She's stunning, isn't she? I can't quite believe we'll be sailing on her. I was picturing something much less grand. After all, it's described as an affordable yet luxury cruise ship. What's an affordable yet luxury ship when it's at home? I heard it was supposed to be a small cruise ship that the average member of the public could afford to enjoy. This is small? Yeah, look at it. Are you kidding? It's like a fisherman's boat. It certainly doesn't look small, does it? Just imagine what the inside's going to be like. I never dreamt I'd travel on a ship like this. No, nor do I. And we certainly wouldn't be if it wasn't for Madame Dublé giving us the tickets. I'm so excited about the party too. Cruising down the Thames, hobnobbing with London's elite. That sounds so sexual. Nobbing, you're hobbing those knobs, huh? The ticket says, in celebration of the maiden voyage of the Temtanic. It's all very fancy, isn't it? Maybe I'll do... Maybe... <laughs> you cannot go around calling people double chin. Oh my god, but I love it. I love it. Maybe old double chin isn't really fat at all. Maybe it's all money stuffed up her dress. Oh my god, Cheryl. I mean, three tickets on a cruise like this must have cost a small fortune. Definitely, and she even arranged it so that you could come too. Cheryl, dogs aren't usually allowed on board. As a fellow pet lover, she obviously threw her weight around a little for us. <laughs> a lot of weight. Well, I owe her a lick for saving me from boredom at the office. I just hope it isn't too rough. Now, Ernest, you did bring all the luggage, didn't you? Oh yes, miss. I just entrusted it to a deckhand a little while ago. He said it wouldn't be taken to our cabins later. I must say, your case was particularly heavy, Miss Layton. Whatever did you pack? Was it really that heavy? I only put in essentials. I didn't realize essentials could weigh so much. She's probably got a kitchen sink in there, pinstripes. No, it's the industrial-sized hairdryer. And she can't live without it! What the dickens are you doing here? 
Good evening, Inspector Hastings. Have you been invited on the maiden voyage as well? Yeah, by Dublay. Said it was a thank you for all the hard work I put in to help her at times. Couldn't very well refuse, could I? Ah, Madam invited us as well. Thank heavens for that! I was starting to wonder who I could talk to. I suppose the rest of the guests will all be millionaires. I don't know. The Themtat Temtatic is supposed to be an affordable yet luxury cruise ship accessible to all. Pah! Looks highly accessible. These well-to-do lot don't know what's normal sometimes. It is an incredible vessel, isn't it? There seem to be an awful lot of crew members as well as guests. I think a vessel of this size requires a considerable crew, miss. They certainly seem to be very busy, don't they? Get those trucks on board! This guy looks familiar. What does it look like I'm doing, eh? It looks like you're dragging your feet, sailor! Faster, man, faster! All right, all right. We'll be weighing anchor soon. We gotta get everything on board. Poor people, they're rushed off their feet. Hmm? What is it, cat? Isn't that Emiliano over there? Oh yes, so it is. I think she's seen us too. Good evening, Inspector Catriel Ernest. I see you've brought your pet along with you. Good evening, Emiliana. Have you been invited to the party of the Temptatic too? Yes, I have. You're not coming, are you? Yes, we are. Madame Dublay invited us. Bish. Oh, yes, it was her who invited me too. I was hoping to be able to relax and enjoy the cruise. Not much chance of that happening with you on board. Yo, she is cold as ice. Oh, don't be like that. Let's enjoy it together. <sighs> it looks like we're ready to embark. What is this face? Hello. Captain Pullman, is it? I do apologize for the wait, ladies, gentlemen. However, we are now ready to begin boarding the vessel. March your step as you walk the gangplank. This is so exciting. Come along, on we go. Oh, wait for us, miss. Don't forget about your pet. It's much larger inside than I'd expected. I wonder where our cabins are. I think our cabin numbers are printed on the tickets. Really? Let's see. Oh yes, here it is. It looks like I'm in the standard class deluxe. I'm in standard class deluxe though. Oh yes, so you are. And our cabin number is the same. It looks like we're sharing for the night. Madame Dublay has a lot to answer for. I just seem to be in regular standard class cabin number, um, poor, the poor class cabin. Same as me, sunshine. Let's looks like we'll be bunking up together. Ooh, is this a new budding romance I sense? I think our cabin's down this way, miss, so shall we meet again later? All right, Ernest, bye-bye. She's over here sitting, sipping champagne. So, Amidiala, Amelalala, shall we? This is gonna be fun. I don't think so, Cheryl. Your cabin's the other way. You may be a dog, but you still can't share a cabin with us ladies. It's not what a gentlewoman does. I I knew that. I was just confused. Pinstripes, wait for me! So, the deluxe accommodation appears to be this way.
Ooh, this is a nice looking room! So this is standard class deluxe. It's quite a large cabin actually, isn't it? What luck! It's certainly better than I was expecting. And my suitcase is here already. Isn't it a little overstuffed? What have you gotten there, Catriel? A detective's bag is always full. I have many important things to take around with me, even for one night. That's too much for one night, surely. You could manage for a week without a suitcase that full. Or with a... I don't think so. I already whittled it down to the bare minimum. You know... Let's not waste any more time talking about luggage. We should be out on deck, enjoying the cruise. Well, I agree with that. Too much time in here could be trying. Shall we go and ask Ernest and Inspector Hastings if they want to join us? Yes, all right. We'll go and find their cabin in standard class. Hello, Ernest. You and the inspector are all settled in, I hope. This is regular standard class, is it? <laughs> yes. Oh, hello again, miss. Thank you for giving me the scraps. Is there something wrong with our captain? You keep peering around. Oh, no, it's just... It seems a little basic. God damn. R really? More than a few rungs down on the ladder of luxury, I'd say. If our cabin was the Ritz, yours would be, say, the poor house. <laughs> We're too fancy. <laughs> Don't say it, miss. I think I'd rather not know. We're both in standard class. It can't be that different. This cabin's pretty fancy, if you ask me. I agree. It. I think it's a splendid cabin. A roof to keep the rain out, walls to keep the wind out, door to keep the noise out. What's the problem, eh? When you put it like that, I feel rather small for letting a little thing like this ruffle my feathers. So you should, sunshine. Who gives a monkey's ass what the rooms look like as long as you could sleep in it? Get your priorities right. I'd like this guy's attitude. Sound advice, Ernest. You really shouldn't let this cramped little disgusting poor cabin get you down. Who was it that brought it up again? Anyway, Amelia and Anna and I were wondering if you'd like to join us on deck? Rather. I'm dying to see what's up like up there. Excellent. What are we waiting for then? Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. With cloudless skies above us, we have a perfect night for our cruise. The crew still has some final preparations to make before we depart, so please just enjoy the atmosphere. That must be the ship's captain. Yes, no question. Ooh, what gave that away? How can you tell, miss? Oh, I just can. Ladies' intuition. Gots again? I don't think you're far off there, Catriel. Do you think so too? His composed demeanor, his uniform, the fact that he's addressed the passengers. Yes, I'd say there's a high probability that he is the captain of this vessel. So you're like me, Emiliana. You think he's the captain as well? You simply guessed. I, on the other hand, used my profiling skills to arrive at the truth through logic and reasoning. I'm not like you at all. Oh, you two. He's coming over. Look. Welcome aboard the Temtanic. I am the captain of this vessel, Midas Pullman. I hope you enjoy our cruise. The weather forecast is for low winds and no rain, so you should be in for a treat. I knew you were the captain. Okay, settle down about that, okay? 
We're very much looking forward to this, Captain Pullman. Thank you. I'll say. This ship of yours is really very swish, isn't it? You like her, do you? Yes, she's as small as cruise ships go, but plenty big enough to be comfortable. She doesn't seem small to me at all. Oh, you must be one of those poor people. <laughs> well, put her alongside some of the grander ships and you'd soon change your mind, sir. The ship I captained before this one, for example, was a Goliath of by comparison. You've captained larger vessels? Amazing. You can't judge a ship by its size alone, though. It's certainly not a case of the bigger the better. Mm, getting a little defensive there, are we? The greatest cruise ships are the ones that give their passengers the smoothest and most enjoyable ride. Not about the sheer size! Well, that's jolly sound logic. Yes, jolly good. So I'd just like to go over our itinerary, if I may. After we set off, we'll head downriver towards the sea and out into the open waters. Once we're a little way offshore, we'll let the party get into full swing, and then tomorrow we'll head back up to the river to land again. It sounds jolly romantic, doesn't it? A dinner party on a cruise ship in the open waters of the sea, gazing back to the shore? It sounds wonderful, yes. Dinner on such a luxury ship is bound to be absolutely mouth-watering. I think I can see drool. Well, we should be ready to depart any moment now, so I wish you all a very enjoyable cruise, ladies and gentlemen. We're off at last. I'm sure this is gonna be quite an adventure. I have a feeling something's gonna happen. When you say you've got a feeling something's gonna happen, that usually means a case. Oh, don't, Inspector. This is supposed to be a break for work for me. Yeah, you and me both. Blah, 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 blah. Let's hope we can stay off duty, eh? Let's just all enjoy the cruise. My suitcase is the only case I need. Excuse me, Miss Catriel. Leighton, I, oh, I believe. <laughs> Inspector Hastings and Miss Spaghetti from Scotland Yard, if I'm not mistaken. Madame Dublay told me that she had sent you invitations for this little cruise. Yes, you're one of these seven dragons, aren't you? I remember seeing you at the premiere of the No Sub for Love at the Savloy. I swear to God, she says this every case. Yes, indeed, Miss. I am... Mustafa Fullhold! Mufasa Fullhold! The owner of the ship. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Perhaps you had heard of my shipbuilding business here in London? Hmm? Bountiful Holdings? Hmm? Bountiful Holdings? It's the UK's number one shipbuilding and shipping company, Catriel. According to Company's House, profit in recent years has derived as much from marine transportation as shipbuilding. And the company's shareholder report indicates new investment in passenger shipping. I believe the objective is to reclaim some of the business lost to the motor, motor and airline industries in recent years. You are very well informed, Miss Spaghetti. In fact, this affordable luxury cruise ship was one of my own ideas. One cannot tread water in business. One must always seek new horizons. Think of new ideas. In the past, I've taken no prisoners when I was making a name for myself. Many of my rivals wept because of me. But every man is the smith of his own fortune. A dog-eat-dog -dog world, as they say. A doggy dog, dog world. No doubt an eminent detective such as yourself understands what I'm talking about. I, uh, try not to eat my dog. So people apparently gain eminence through sheer good luck. Well, it is uncommon for Madame Dublé to compliment anyone. She tells me you have an incredible mind. I'd like to see that mind in action if you'll indulge me. 
But why don't we save this for the next video? Because it's already been close to 30 minutes. So stay tuned for the next episode. Have a lovely weekend. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.